Podcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Keeps doing <laughs> Come on, get into it, Johnny. <laughs> Sarah! Sarah! <laughs> All right. Hey, welcome to AfterBuzz TV for a special Spotlight On interview. Now, this was kind of like the Edward Snowden interview. It was very secretive. I got a text from Johnny Bananas that said, I need this. I, I, I need to come into the studio. I need to set the record straight. I, I've been getting a lot of mixed messages on social media. So I instantly called up my co-host, Roxy Stryer. Ooh, ooh. And I said, we're going to make this happen. So we're in a, in a special destination right now in location. You guys don't know where it is. It's, it's, it's actually a, a secret location. Uh, A.K.A. my mother's basement. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, nice basement. But mom, everyone. My meatloaf, mom. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. We can deal with that. <laughs> welcome. I welcome Johnny Bananas, everyone. Welcome. Thank you. All right. This is going to be a problem. <laughs> This is going to be a real oh God, this is gonna problem. Be, it's a real gag. Um, thank you, thank you for having me, we're Roxy. Go with you it. look great as usual. I love your cardigan. Are you saying that because you're trying to impress me? Am I like how am you. Am I supposed to be nicer to you now? The yeah. aqua fresh blue. Today's a blue day. I think we're all feeling a little blue. Thank it's you for the shirt. So, le so listen. Um, when I tweeted out some stuff, I said, "Listen, I'm going to go one on one. I'm going to no holds barred. I'm not, you know, I'm, obviously I'm one of your best friends, um, and I don't call you on your birthday. I'll just throw that right out there. Uh, and I would Ooh. consider myself a very good friend. Um, but I'm going to go no holds barred. I got questions for you that people wanted to know. Um, Roxy's going to jump in. Yeah. Uh, I am. So let's get down to it right right off the bat. We have uh, about 40, 50 minutes with you, so you can really dig in. Um, so you come back from exile. You beat Zach and them. You come back. The tone of the house now." is very excited. The tone before was not as excited, especially with Sarah and Jordan because the whole Wes Leroy thing. So when you come back, what do you get received by? Give us the the real scoop. How was your relationship with, with Jordan and Sarah then when you returned to the house? Before returning to the house, I remember in exile telling Nani, I'm like, we're gonna walk into a, we're literally gonna stir up a hornet's nest, okay? People are already gonna be pissed off enough as it is seeing me walk back into the house. But knowing that I'm now getting a second chance, it's like, what do we have to do to get rid of this guy? You know? So I told Nani, I'm like, listen, just be prepared to walk into the house and literally be treated like, like, uh, you know, Satan himself. Uh, and it, the reception couldn't have been any, it, it could not have been any different. I mean, we were literally greeted as like saviors. Right. We, we come back into the house and, I mean, we get there, and I'm telling Nani, I'm like, listen, you got to keep your 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 mouth shut, your eyes down. I'm like, let's pretend like we've been living in the worst like environment ever. We've been camping on a beach, you know. We've been brushing our teeth with you know palm branches and wiping right. our ass with you know crab shells. But um, it could the reception couldn't have been any different. I mean, like I said, we we walk back in, and I mean, Sarah and Jordan were. Uh, they wouldn't leave us alone. We were like, we were being greeted as like saviors. And the only person that was actually pissed off about seeing us come back in, uh, like, you know, for good reason was Wes, because right. he knew that things were about to get really bad. If you had stayed in the house and somebody else had come in from being exiled, would you have greeted them with open arms? Or do you think you would have thought this was crap that they got to come back in? I think, or it, how? I think it depends on who who it is that was coming back. It, it, it's okay. In, in uh, the interest of full disclosure, if the shoe was on the other foot and I was someone in the house and I came back in, I'd be I'd be pissed off. Right. Right. Se secretly and not secretly, I would have I would have been upset. But the thing is, people are they're like, oh, well, you got a second chance. I didn't create the game. Right. You were telling me that on the way in. I didn't I didn't call MTV and say, hey, I got a great idea. In case I get eliminated, put me in an exile house so I can f enter my way back in. It just so happened that the first challenge I've been eliminated early on. They had this crazy plot twist, and and I made it back, and it was it was epic. And let's be honest, you weren't you didn't just get a, a free pass back into the house; you earned it. 
ob, ob, you know, beating competitor after competitor. There were ups, there were upsides and downsides to the exile. The upside was, I mean, we didn't have to do challenges, you know, twice a week, and we actually got to live like human beings. The downside was we had to go into two eliminations a week. It, it's not like in a, in a regular challenge where it's like, oh, you may or may not get voted in. We knew twice a week we're going into eliminations. We're going to be going into eliminations against people who just lost, so they're going to have a lot to fight for. And we don't know how many of these eliminations we're going to have to go on. I've in the most challenges, the most eliminations I've been on a challenge was free agents. I was in three. I was in six in this challenge. Wow. So I mean, it it it, it was. It was pretty gnarly. So anyone that says that, you know, we didn't, you know, earn our way back in the house, I mean, I don't see how us going, we got went into eliminations against the same people that were in the house. So it's, you know, it right. was. Uh, go ahead, Rox. I would say you arguably had less of a free pass than somebody like Teresa, who didn't have to fight to get back in and all of a sudden kind of was just yeah. thrown back into the mix. That was a strange, that was, uh, that was a strange scenario, but I can't, I mean, I. There, you didn't create that game either. I didn't create that game, but also. I can't throw shade on what what happened with her because I mean she got let back into the house. We did too. There's you know. So Johnny, let's get to it. So coming into the the challenge, did you guys have a verbal agreement? Like, did you say, "Hey Sarah, I'm gonna really watch your back if you watch mine and take this thing to the end"? Because that's what I think people are kind of in, in the dark about, or it's a little hazy. Like, was there an understanding, or was there uh, an, an unspoken understanding, or did you think, "Hey, at the end of this thing"? If there's four teams left, and I'm one of them with Sarah and Leroy, that other team is definitely going you in. You mean before the game I mean before started? the game even. I mean, once you get in there, you, you you kind of look at the house, you size people up, but did you ever have that, that disclosure of, look, I'll protect you if you protect me at some point in that game? I mean... Mark, you, you've been at you've been at this game for, you know, longer than, than anyone. And, I mean, you know, the thing about alliances and the thing about the way that I've always entered an alliance and I'm sure you have as well and other people who respect the way it, it, the game's played is it's it's if you're friends with somebody the only thing that creates a true alliance is actually having it's almost like it's almost like collateral being friends with somebody outside of the show could almost be viewed as collateral because if you screw this person over or if you don't come through on this agreement that you've made repercussions are going to happen outside of the show it's going to it's, it's going gonna to affect the friendship it's going to outside. affect you outside of the show it's it, there, there's more at stake than just oh this is a person i met on the challenge we decided to create this house of cards alliance and you know and it didn't work out those alliances never work out the thing is with sarah what what there's there's a lot of angles to our relationship and the reason that you know we've been in an alliance for as long as we have one being the fact that We've known each other for eight years. I mean, I've known this girl on and off the show. And despite what she wants to say and how much she wants to downplay our relationship outside of the show, I considered it a legitimate friendship. I mean, you know, this girl's been to my hometown. I set her up with my hairdresser years ago. Um, Didn't you guys actually go have a training day before you left? You did like rock climbing? We trained together before this. I mean, we and trained together. you go get together. drinks with her? Do you yeah. call her? You guys hang out? Okay, do, here's another thing. On the after show, she said that we're not friends, or she doesn't consider our friendship legitimate because I didn't call her on her birthday. Mark, I didn't call you on your birthday. And I'm I don't, still pissed about that. I don't remember getting a call from, from you on my birthday. No. And I, I, this is something we're going to have to talk about after the show because I don't consider it's our friendship It's a whole other episode, real. JB. Okay. But, but no, going back to our pre-game alliance, yes, we, I mean, yeah, we went, we trained before, we went rock climbing. We live in, in Orange County. We live, you know, not too far apart. And um, yeah, so I thought coming into this, we talked about it, but it I didn't think it was something that needed to be really like discussed. Like, hey, S Sarah, what if this scenario plays out in the end? You just expected it because she's obviously a friend outside the show, just as I would do with with a friend like uh, we've worked together on shows in the past. You know, we've honestly had this you know unspoken alliance in the past, and I just you know I didn't we yeah we didn't we didn't sit there and write out a contract. Right. But I mean, you don't. You, I didn't think we needed to. Right. Do you honesty. feel like this was her saying to you two hundred and fifty? thousand dollars is more important to me than your friendship i think because that's kind of what it came down to uh, well it wasn't it was it was half, half of that half of 250 but um i think that's part of what i think that's part of what she was saying i think 
Sarah just, you know, growing up and how she's kind of lived her life. I don't think she's ever really been put in that position where she's um, had the opportunity to make a decision like that. She has never been in, you know, a winning position before. So, um, yeah, I think the money, I think the fact that uh, she knew this was her last challenge. Um I think a lot of things factored in her decision, but at the end of the day, I mean, does that make what she did, in my opinion, okay? I, I mean, I don't think so. And I got a question for you, and I got a lot of Twitter questions about this. So let's say you were that power couple in the end. Would have you still thrown the rookies in and let Sarah and Jordan stay? I mean, would have you thrown them in What's if the tables were turned? I mean, this is one of those questions where it's like, I don't even feel like I need to dignify this or the response, but absolutely. I would have, I mean, there's, there's, we, from day one, and you can check on past challenges, this is the way we play the game. You, if you have the opportunity to bring a layup with you up until the final, you do that. And you do it as an insurance policy for whoever, whichever veteran team has to go into the final elimination. You want it to be an, an easier one, obviously. You, 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 want, you want to make it like, listen, we've all come this far. We've all played this game. We've all spilled a lot of blood in the same mud. Obviously, we deserve to be here. And you know what? Let's let's make this final step, this final push to get into the final. Let's whoever has to go into it, let's make it as easy for them as possible. And that's what the rookies were there for. Jordan and Sarah knew that's what the rookies were there for. I mean, that's why when originally when Wes approached Jordan and was like, "Hey, whoever you know, make this deal with me, and whoever loses gets the rookies." And Jordan was like, "No, it was because no, we they they still have their purpose to serve. You know what I mean? This layup, we need to keep this layup around as insurance policy for us." There are people out there who have said that you are a fierce competitor and that you play this game better than anybody else. And to that point, they say you've thrown a lot of people under the bus before. Mm -hmm. Would you say that's because they're not your actual friends outside of the game, or or what? Or and let's touch. Let's touch specifically. Let's let's clear the air on this topic. So you got a lot of stuff about the flack of what what went down at the end of the island with Paula. Mm -hmm. A lot of people told me to ask you about that. So, right. What do you see different about that? If you, come on now, come on, people. Well, Mike, hold on. It's not me. That was such a good question. I can still hear. What I do? I, do I don't know. Mike moved. I don't understand like what it is. I don't know. We'll have to piece it. What'd you do? I don't know. <laughs> We're back, guys. It's live television. Suck it. Um, fix it in post. Fix yeah, it in fix post. It. Nobody move. <laughs> Everyone unplug and plug back in. I did. Um, Nix the headphone. Good grief. It happens whenever you move. No. I've never. This is so funny because I've never. Okay. Don't, Do I have to sit like this? <laughs> don't move. <laughs> Do not move a muscle. You hold still. All right. I'll, I'll pick up that thought. If we can edit that stuff out. So, Johnny. A lot of people wanted to me to ask you about the Paula situation at the end of the island. They say this happened, the same thing you did to Paula, Sarah did to you. Now, what you wanted to explain that in more detail so people can think uh, uh, of what really went down. So tell us about that. Well, first, to hit on uh, the Roxy point, um, I, this shouldn't take too long to explain, but yeah, have I manipulated people and have I, you know, thrown people under the bus in the past? Absolutely. That's part of the game. I've never, what, my, my point was, these are people who didn't mean anything to me. People brought up Cara Maria. How could you throw a girl in with a broken hand? Well, I don't know if you watched the rest of the season, but she threw me in first, and me and Cara Maria don't have a good relationship, never have on, on these challenges. The Paula situation, that could be the only thing that, my only, you know, blemish or hiccup or whatever you want to call it, but the circumstances surrounding that that situation could not have been any more different than the, than the Sarah situation. Putting aside the fact that it was seven years ago, I was 24 years old and it was my third challenge. Um, you know, getting to the end of the island and just to explain to people who didn't watch the island, basically the way it went down is there was eight positions in the final. You were, and we had to be on, we had to get on boats and we had to row across to this other island. And in order to get on one of these boats, you needed a key. It came down to where me, Kenny, Derek, and Paula were basically key holders at that point. 
um, and Dunbar. Evelyn wanted basically Paula's spot on our boat, and she said, I'm going to take Banana's Key. Uh, if I take Banana's Key, he goes home. The only thing that will change my mind from sending him home is if you give me a spot on your boat. It was Kenny, Derek, and I who had battled the entire season. The only reason Paula had a key in the first place was because we had won one and given it to her. She was a drunk disaster the entire show. So literally, we walked her to the final. And it got to the point where, hey, it came down to a situation where it was either me or it was Paula. And I was stuck between a rock and a hard place. Not that it makes the decision right. Not that it takes any of the hurt out of it. But there, it, the decision needed to be made as far as I was concerned for my stake in the game. Well, let me ask you something because you made a big deal about the fact that it was years ago and all of that. Would you have changed your decision if this was Johnny Bananas today? On If, if this was the island again? Yeah. I mean, it's it's hard to say. I mean, the, the circumstances then, if 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 the exact same circumstances t took place today, I mean, it, it's hard to say. I, I I don't think I would. I mean, in all honesty, like I said, you 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 play this game to get to the final, and then once you get to the final, all bets are off. And we had gotten as close to the final as we possibly could, and it just we got we got jammed up, and it got to a point where Evelyn put me in a position where it was like either it's either you or Paula. And with the Sarah situation, it, it, it couldn't be more different. Sarah n not only already had her ticket punched to the final, she was already in the final. There was another much more viable option in the rookies who had skated their way all the way to the final, hadn't seen an elimination, didn't deserve to be there, in my opinion. And, you know, um, <laughs> we're only going to serve the purpose that that they were meant to serve. So for people to say you did the same thing to Paul and it's the same. Listen, the whole Paul thing it was it was it was shitty and it it was a horrible decision that had to be made, but at the end of the day it was just a decision that had to be made. The Sarah decision did not. Could you argue that Sarah and Jordan were so threatened by you that they did feel like it was them or you because they thought that if you went to an elimination, you would win and therefore take away their chance at making more money? Okay, so and that's where the whole alliance thing comes comes into play. And it, it wasn't, and here's another thing, it wasn't Sarah and Jordan. This was a decision made by Sarah. Can and, you elaborate on that? Because it's yeah, I, I didn't, and I didn't even realize this until I actually saw the season. I mean, I know what happened obviously at the end between me and Sarah, but what shocked me more than anything was the fact that Jordan, believe it or not, had my back. He had every reason to hate me. I mean, based on the mm. way our relationship ended at the end of free agents, and you know, after his you know crazy ballsy move that he made and getting sent home, and our you know animosity towards each other, um, he had every reason to be the one that wanted to get rid of me and wanted to send me home yet he was the one that was saying no sarah like i want him here in the end as a competitor i want to compete against him it will mean more to me to win a final running against him than it would against whoever else um and you know that was uh that wasn't in the cards dude. and didn't you say when you got to the challenge sarah actually pulled you aside and said look i know you have beef with jordan but he's my partner can you guys put bygones be bygones and and, and not go attack him it was before the challenge but yeah i mean that was basically part of the conversation that we had before leaving on the show was you know we we knew based on the cast what the format was going to be um and she knew what mine and jordan's obviously tumultuous relationship was she knew she was going to be paired up with him and um yeah as a favor she asked me hey would you please put your differences aside with jordan in order to uh you know make this thing work and i mean that right there I don't think I've ever despised anyone more than I than I than him coming into a challenge. Hmm. So if that right there doesn't show you that there was something more than just this, you know, lame friendship that Sarah wants to make it out to be, I mean, you know, I put my differences aside with this with this guy that I wanted nothing more than to, you know, have his head on a spit. But um, you know, for her, yeah, we put our differences aside and we we made it work. And what's crazy about it is the two people I came into this show in an alliance with was Leroy and Sarah, and we made it to the end, and we were we were right there. So when it finally came down to it, he obviously wanted to throw in Jay and Jenna, and she wanted to throw you guys mm -hmm. in. How did she win? Because from a fan's perspective, as we're sitting there watching, he's saying, Sarah, don't do this. Is it because she's a vet? She gets more power? No. Or? What it is is, if you noticed on this season, every time 
Okay, for uh, to take for example, when um, Zach and John A had to make a decision of who was going to go in, John A wanted to send in in Jenna. Okay, which would have caused a lot more controversy. Zach wanted to take the easy way out and throw in I don't know whichever you know right. rookie team it was. Producers know this; they know before with the with the, with the two with the power couple. Right. Which decision is going to create more drama and stir up more animosity? And so they'll always, they'll tell TJ to ask the person, it's your decision, whichever choice they think is going to cause more controversy. They knew going into that decision. They knew. I didn't. Nobody else did. They knew going into that what, what Sarah's, what her, her, her plan was, what her motives were, which is why they basically said, Sarah, who do you want? And didn't even give Jordan a say in the matter. And a lot of people are saying too, because after Sarah made this, the decision and called you guys out, she was crying and she was, was she was frantic. So I, I think deep down, this is the way I looked at it because I've, I've been in alliances with you and I know alliances, I play that game. So I know the alliance, when you have an alliance or an understanding with someone, it goes to the end. It doesn't go until it's convenient for your team to forward in the game. Like it was very easy for them to not send you in and you guys just all battle it out and you guys are all at the after party cheering beers and it was a great time. But here's the question I have for you. Um, she was so distraught, it, it kind of like, it, it revealed that deep down, I think she knows she was doing the wrong thing, like emotionally, yeah. but she just did it anyway. Like, I, I really thought that was a telling sign for her that if she did it and it's gameplay, you just, you do it and it's gameplay and you fucking suck it up and you're done. But but the emotion she showed of how sad she was after it, I felt like she knew it was a horrible move. Yeah. No, there's no way that... that she wants to make everyone believe that that what she did, she's totally okay with. I, I know deep down, regardless of what she wants to post on her Instagram about being fine with the decisions that she made or, you know, on Twitter. It's like, I know deep down that, that, um, that what she did, you know, doesn't sit right with her. I mean, it, it can't. If it did, then, then, that would be an issue, then that would be a huge problem. You say you know deep down, so that makes me think you guys haven't had a conversation since the show. No, we really we haven't. I mean, we haven't had a conversation, and and you know, I, I people are like, oh, "Are you gonna forgive her?" It's like, am I gonna forgive her? I'm not gonna let this haunt me for the rest of my life. But I think what she did in the way that she did it, in the manner that she did it, um, y you know, people say it's just a game. Well, it that's our reality. When we're there, I mean, we've I've just spent eight weeks of my life going through, I mean, mental and physical torture to get here. So. Is it a game? I mean, I guess, but at this, but at the end of the day, I mean, this is this has been my life for the last eight weeks, and I've poured a lot into it. So for for people, for viewers, I understand you guys just see all you know us having fun and all this, but it's it's a nightmare, dude. And you, I mean, you oh, know it. It's, it's, you yeah. know it. I mean, it and is. it's gotten worse every season to where now it's like after eight weeks, I mean, you literally feel like you've been, you know, you've been put through the ringer. So. To, to make it, to get as close as we did and to have the decision be in in a friend's hand and, and to have the decision, in my opinion, be just, I mean, it couldn't be more cut and dry and for her to still do what she did. I mean, that to me, you know, goes outside of the show. And it's like, if, you know, I, I, I a, a true friend of mine would, would never, couldn't have, couldn't have, not wouldn't have, a true friend of mine could not have done what you did. And apparently, according to her and on the after show and from what I've gathered after, our friendship, we didn't have a friendship in the first place and our friendship was baloney. Um, I would have liked to have known this before we went on the show <laughs> right. um, instead of her revealing it after. But I mean, you know. Is I'm, that offensive to you that she said you guys were never friends? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, because I know it's not true. And that's the thing is it's, is it's, it's Sarah's been on a, like this PR damage control campaign ever since this show aired and she is doing everything she in her power to justify why she did what she did. She brought up the fact that I said all's fair and love war and challenges on free agents as a reason as to why she made the decision that she did. She used the fact that I didn't argue enough for Leroy and Naya to get to not get sent in as a reason. She even brought in um, how I conduct myself in relationships outside of the show as a reason why, you know, and, and, and it's basically like, Sarah, I think you know deep down what you did was, you know, was, was double crossing. And instead of just admitting, if she would just admit it and say, listen, I, I, it, was, it was a shitty move, 
You know, I'd be upset if you did it to me. No, she wants to make it out like she did it, and I'm the reason that she did. And it. that's what I said. I, 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 I forget who I was watching with, but I said to to the person was, if she would have just said, yeah, it was a shitty move. I, I, I went for it, and I was, you know, had a moment of where I thought it would really help me out. You would take that better than well, just absolutely. her trying to justify. It. At least I would. Well, and, and, as, another, as, and another thing is, is you know, if if going into this, if if there would have been some sort of an understanding, because people are like, well, you've screwed all these people over in the past. You play a dirty game. Me and and you know this, CT and I, we've had a rivalry that goes back to the beginning of time. Wes and I, same thing. They've done me dirty. I've done them dirty. But at the end of the day, it's like I can't, I don't harbor any ill will or animosity towards these guys because because I know which team they're on and it's not mine. And in my opinion, in order for there to be betrayal, there has to first be trust. And I don't trust them, you know? And that was the thing is, I, I really, I mean, I trusted Sarah. I really, truly did. She, and you know, she's one of those people on the show, she's different than almost every single girl that plays the game where she almost brings like this, you know, not an innocence, but like, you know, she just brings a different dynamic to the game. And it's almost like she's always put herself above the antics of what goes on in the house and that she's better than that. And I don't play this game. You got to be nice to each other and play a nice game and all this stuff. And it's like, that's what makes her so appealing. And that's why I, I felt like I could trust her is because I thought she was above that. And apparently that's not the case. She talks a lot about that and says that she really liked playing that way, but she never won. And this is a game and she wanted to win. And that's what seems to make her so upset. She says she played like that for season after season. Do you think part of that is an act and she's trying to pull at our heartstrings? Or do you really think she's torn up inside? Okay. Sarah's done... I believe part of it is her damn partners get sent home every time exactly. because they're idiots. Yeah, that's that's well, and one that, thing. Well, what I was going to say yeah. is she's done, I don't know how many challenges she's done, but I know she's made it, I believe, to three or four finals. She's only done, I don't know, eight eight challenges. Two of them that, that, that she was on, she only went home because of partners. So obviously, whatever she's doing in her game is working because she's making it to, she's made it to three or four finals. I mean, that's, that's incredible, you know, mm. to, to, to make it there. But the fact that she hasn't won, that's not necessarily because of the way she's played the game. Sometimes if you're in team games, you don't have control over who you're with in the end. You don't. You have no control over who you're paired up with. So I don't think there was anything wrong. In fact, I think that the way she played the game is why she made it to finals and is why she was so successful. Is because people looked at her as someone who was above the the drama and the bullshit and and you know the the way that the games usually played. So when that when she called your name out that that night and on top of the building and then TJ blurted it out, did you just think? Did your heart sink? Were you thinking, "Is this really happening to me?" It was. I I was literally. I I'd said this before, but I was waiting for Ashton Kutcher to pull off his friggin' <laughs> TJ Lavin mask and tell me I was being punked. Like it was that. It. it I mean, you saw it. I, I watched it again, and like, if you want to see, if you want to see the look of someone in. 100% pure shock. Rewatch that part when I when when I first realized what was actually going on. Both you and Nani. I mean, it was. It's indescribable, man. I mean, I I couldn't in a million years. I would have I would have never expected that to happen, dude. And I guess that's but but then again, I guess that's that's on me, dude, because I sh I should have. Now you know they say hindsight is twenty twenty. I mean, the the warning signs were there. They were there. Is that going? Is in your ears? Take. Can you take it off? Take it off. Take them off. Okay. So much post. So much post. Keep going. Yeah. Um. No. The the warning signs were there. It's funny because the one conversation that we actually had that they decided to another one of her reasons or justifications as to why she threw me in was they, we had a conversation at, at one point. This was after I was already after back from exile. And she um, was saying, yeah, you know, if, if, uh, if you're going to make it to a final, why do you want strong people there? And I said, and I did say this, anyone who says they want the strongest people there in the end is full of shit, which right. is true. Because you don't want strong people there in the end. But That's when you were lying in the bed. And yeah, the, yeah, but if these, but, but the, the, the caveat there is if these people are part of your alliance, Right. If these people have helped you get there, that's a whole different scenario. Of course, if you're going to a final and you look and you have the option to eliminate, you know, whoever who, who you think is going to be a threat to you, then then that's then that's totally understandable. But 
it, that's where the alliance comes and in. And I think that's the main reason why you were soured so much is she had the decision to send in someone, a couple, that she had no, um, no relationship outside of the show at all. I mean, Jenna and, and Jay, she had to know these guys at all. So when, by doing that, because inevitably, you guys did play the perfect game. You were all going to be there in the end. Yeah. Leroy would have beaten Jay, no problem. And it would have been right off in the sunset, as friends, as our alliance pulled this off, hey, it was great that I could actually work with you this time, Jordan. That would have been a great ending as well. So the, the fact it would, that... It would, have been, it would have been a much more exciting final, too. I think what she's probably thinking, though, is that she is going to come in third period if she has you guys come and doesn't have jay and jenna come mm -hmm. and if she takes jay and jenna then that she makes, might have a chance of coming in second that, place. then that makes it worth <laughs> because it. the money of second place the compared to third is the, then your friendship was only worth 30 grand yeah it's blood money. bananas yeah 30 grand it's, of blood it, money it is it's blood money <laughs> so hey i'm gonna re i'm taking twitter questions now but i'm gonna oh, rewind cool. the clock yeah um so when you did have that that sit down with them when they won and they have their their winner's dinner and they bring you in pizza party pizza party um a lot of people are saying oh well he didn't stand up for for leroy and 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 naya that much so he wasn't really that great of a friend how do you respond to that well let's rewind a little bit before that because i'm also getting accused of throwing the 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 challenge preceding that on purpose yes i did i did that was 100 percent on purpose i jumped off on purpose why we had just come back into the house like i had already said it was the strangest scenario ever in challenge history so for us to come back into the house and then win the first challenge back it would have it would have pissed off probably everybody in the house even people who were in my alliance and i told not this before and they actually have us uh in on camera in the morning having this discussion with sarah and jordan and i'm basically like listen i don't care who wins today we're not winning i will jump off if i have to we're not going to win um, you we're weren't in the nervous about getting thrown in? No. No, not no, at all. No, because he had an alliance. We knew, yeah. Of course. Uh, we had an alliance. Come we on. had an alliance. We knew. Here's what we, here's what we knew. We had to gang up on Wes. We got to get rid of Wes and Teresa right out of the gate immediately. Okay? Then all we have to do is make sure Jay and Jenna don't win. Then Leroy, Sarah, or I will, or Leroy or Sarah will be the power couple, and we're, we're fine. Right? But you didn't know what the competition was. I, I mean, didn't. This happened to be actually designed so that you guys could win. Well, we didn't know what it was, but we knew whatever it was, we were going to have to figure out a way to work together and to team up. And if and and those would be our best odds of getting of getting West to go in. And once we showed up, and we saw what it was, we knew it would be, we could execute it. Mm -hmm. Once Sarah and Jordan had won, uh before the power couple dinner, um, they had told me, listen, this is the way that we're going. You're obviously safe. We're not throwing in the rookies. We're, we're throwing in uh, Leroy and Nia, right? That was their decision. That decision was already made. So once it came to the power couple dinner, it would have it, it, it would have just been showmanship or it would have just been for camera for me to sit there and be like, oh, but why, and that, that why is, don't you yeah. throw in the rookies? It wouldn't, it wouldn't have made a difference. They already had, and that was their strategy all along. They wanted to more than anything get rid of of uh, Wes and Teresa they knew J Jordan said it we can't send a sheep to do a, a wolf's job it's not like I sat there and was like oh that's a great idea you guys you should do that that was that was the decision that they had already made and you know my my arguing like I said would it would have done nothing would it have looked good on camera oh would it look it would look great me you know trying to you know sit there and provide a defense for for Leroy but at the end of the day I mean that was what they were going to do and nothing that I could have said or done was going to change that all right I have a Twitter question for you we got uh, about eight minutes left Twitter, Twitter. um uh can you please explain the picture you posted of the x-ray with the ribs and the injury <laughs> oh my god explain okay. that First of that means. first of all, I don't know if anyone's ever posted a meme before or something. I've posted half the pictures I post aren't of me or anything related to me. I just sent I, I just put this on Twitter because I was getting the same question. That 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 picture was never supposed to be of me and my ribs. I simply said this is the Battle of the Exiled aftermath, which it was. I fractured two ribs in that elimination against Leroy. I didn't have the hospital's number. I couldn't get on the horn to Norway and be like, hey, could you send over my charts? So it was stupid. I, you know, while we were there before it happened, I wanted to like, you know, create like more, you know, 
drama and more controversy surrounding it. I posted a picture. I got it off like WebMD or something like that. Right. And it's not like I said, hey, guys, check out my ribs. This is me. All I said was battle or about, uh, the, the, the uh, after. X battle after uh, aftermath or whatever. And, <laughs> dude, people are so like... I don't know who is out there sitting there watching my Twitter feed and checking on Google Images if things I'm posting are actually legit. But I, but I want to make this clear as well, people out there. I'm going to save you the time, all you, uh, you know, detective detectives in training. The picture I posted of the baby a couple days ago—it's not my child. Uh, the picture I posted of the dog—I uh, don't have a dog, so that's not my dog either. Ooh. And I posted a picture of uh, an EKG a while back. Um, of a heart that's not my heart either because the truth comes out because yes. uh, the Memes. verdict isn't even in whether or not I actually have a heart so okay so real quick go. real quick do you think you would have won if you guys were there at the end it's it's tough to say you know how finals are dude and and that's the thing is every final that I've every final that I've won they, they haven't been by a landslide these things are always close because they have things in the challenges they have equalizers as you call them right, right. they have puzzles they have eating eating they have different things it's like you don't know if you're going to be able to eat fast you don't know if you're going to be able to swim right. faster or kayak faster so it's like at the end of the day i mean I think, and you, you, you're forgetting the fact that, I mean, you, you, you're only as fast as your slowest person. And N Nani didn't exactly, you know, excel. Light up in the this track. <laughs> ah. Light up the track in this challenge. So it basically would have been Sarah and Jordan racing against Nani. And, you know, if Sarah thinks that she couldn't beat Nani, then I guess then she was justified in doing what she did. To finish the Sarah debate, so she has now announced that she's not going to do any more of these. But say she did, would you ever work with her again? How convenient. Yeah. Oh, Sarah decides that she's not going to do it anymore. No. So listen, so so like I said, we got a lot of great stuff out there today. Um, now's your chance. We have like a few minutes left. All of your followers and all your social media are watching right now for a final thing. Explain to them, you know, because you had a great wave of going where you were Johnny, you were back, and people were loving you, and you mm -hmm. kind of feel, off the record, Johnny kind of feels like he's been kind of being the bad guy lately, and it's, it's, it's emotionally, you know, devastating for him because I know this. He doesn't want to say it, but it is. So... Speak to the people. It's actually not true, Mark. Speak to the people. No, you know what I'm saying. It's like, not like I'm losing. It's like you're making out like, like I'm losing sleep. No, over but this. you know no. what I'm saying. You 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 had a real good thing going, and yeah. you feel like lately it's been kind of shitty. Listen, here's here's the way the challenge works, and everybody knows this. You need a villain, okay? You need you need Christ, and you need the Antichrist. All right, you need the antagonist, and you need the protagonist. This entire season, I think we it was clear. Who the an who, who the antagonist was, and that was Wes, right? As soon as he left, it was like, we need something to plug into this role. And listen, I fit the mold, dude. I've been there in the past. I've been the villain in the past. Listen, if that's if that's who they want to make me, and that's how they want to portray me, and that's who they want who who they want to make me be, then then I I relish the opportunity. At the end of the day, you know, what what I find funny is people out there in the social media sphere. It seems like people who want to spread hate are so much more motivated than people who who are like who don't you know and i understand that listen the 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 way that i see it is um you know i'd rather be talked about negatively than not be talked about at all and a wise man once said if everyone either loves you or everyone hates you you're doing something wrong. So, you know, the fact that I'm being talked about at all, I'm okay with that. Um, I know no matter what I do, I could, I could go and I could be, you know, become an ordained minister, and there's still going to be people out there who hate me. Um, so, but you're 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 definitely not done. Yeah, you're, you're definitely not hanging up the cleats. Yet. Come on, bro. I could I couldn't go out. I couldn't go out like that. And uh, to all those haters out there, just be patient. There's plenty more coming. Ooh. Should we end it there, Yeah, Rox? I think I was going to say something, but on that note. Should we end it there? <laughs> well, listen, uh, Johnny, give him your, your Twitter handle and Instagram, all that stuff. Uh, Follow Johnny. Twitter is uh, MTV Bananas. Instagram is uh, Real Johnny Bananas. Website, realjohnnybananas.com. And lots uh, of good swag on there. Lots and t shirts, of, like the one he's wearing. Yeah. Lots of good swag. Roxy, hit him with your, your Twitter and all that stuff. Uh, you guys can find me everywhere at Roxy Foxy, Foxy Roxy. Uh, yeah. And you can find the godfather of this franchise, this MTV shenanigans, at, at the Mark Long. It's both Twitter and Instagram. Johnny, pleasure having you in. It's been real, sir. Uh, <laughs> do not hate this man. Do not hate this man. He's a I'm good kidding. man. Seems like he feels guy. wronged. <laughs> uh, stick by Johnny Bananas. Um, if he's in your alliance, he will he will take you you know till the death. So just remember that. 
Uh, but thanks you, for coming in. Take you down to Chinatown. Exactly. Um, this has been Roxy. <laughs> Want to hit it? Spotlight on? Yeah, AfterBuzz TV. Spotlight on. You can find us at AfterBuzz TV, AfterBuzzTV.com, YouTube.com slash AfterBuzz TV, and on SoundCloud and on iTunes. Make sure you give us that thumbs up, that five star, and tell us how much you love Johnny Bananas. And retweet this this link over and over. Let's make sure Sarah gets it. We can maybe have Sarah come in and do an, 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 a, a rebuttal, so to speak. I don't um, think she has anything to rebut. He didn't should say we, to should we finish with some acapella? Sarah! Sarah! Storms are brewing in your eyes. That falsetto is so good. Sarah! So good. Sarah! All right, thanks a lot, John. Mark used to be in a boy band, right? Is that true? From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. You later. Buzz, you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.